Hello animators and welcome to On The Go, a series where I show you short but useful animator tips within 5 minutes. Today we're talking about depth of field, also known as blur. Let's begin. So to access depth of field, you obviously need to add a camera. If you open up the camera settings and tick on depth of field, nothing changes until you open HD render mode. If you toggle the setting, you can see what it does is it blurs the background. So let's say I want to have this lamppost in focus, but everything else in the background as well as in the foreground is blurred. How does one do that? What you need to understand is the depth, the range and the fade size. Depth determines how far away from the camera the focus point is going to be. Range determines the range of area which is in focus. And the fade size determines the fades from both ends how wide the transition is going to be between the blurred and the focused parts. So if I make this more simple, let's crank the blur size up all the way. Now let's drop the fade size. As you can see, this made a straight line where the focus starts. If I add some depth, you can see we got this belt. It's blurred here, then it's focused here, then it's blurred here. If I drop the range, you can see both ends of the belt are going closer in together. If I mess with the depth, you can see clearly what's going on. The depth is the center of the focus area. The range is simply how wide the belt is going to be. And finally, the fade size is gonna ease the transition between the fully blurred and the fully focused areas. So with all this information, let's drop down the range bring the depth a bit closer as you see only the lamppost is in focus and now I can drop the blur size a little bit down and increase the fade size the good thing about fade size is that it never goes inside your focus area it always fades away from it so you can easily set up your focus belt and increase the fade size now that we got that out of the way let's talk about other things such as all of these random features down here anamorphic ratio it's going to scale it in one direction but not the other you can mess with the direction with blade angle which is up here. That changes the direction of the anamorphic ratio. You can mess with the number of blades to get a different feel of the blur. That corresponds with the number of blades which is in the camera aperture. So this is almost like having a real camera. I usually keep it on 6 or 8 because that's how most apertures work, but that doesn't matter for us right now. I usually don't like using anamorphic ratio unless the character is running and you want to make him go fast. But the next thing is edge bias. You can clearly see what it does. It kind of biases the edges. It's in the name. The edges get more visible as you would say. And then we have bokeh highlights and bokeh threshold. So bokeh highlights is going to make the blur brighter. Everything which is blurred is gonna get brighter. The bokeh threshold though determines which parts of that get brighter. So if you raise this up, only the bright parts get even brighter. The higher up this value is, the brighter the object needs to be initially for it to get brighter with the bokeh highlights. As you see, only the clouds are affected. But if I raise this up even more, only the brightest parts of the cloud are being affected. If you drop this down, everything is affected because it's all bright enough. And finally, we have Fringe. It works very similar to Chromatic Aberration and it basically offsets the red, green and blue channels in the camera. You can mess with the angle of the offset as well as with the amount of the offset. So if you're going to use Chromatic Aberration, don't go above 10% usually. That's how realistic cameras work. Unless you really want to do a very trippy and glitchy scene, you could do something like this very easily. So that was everything about depth of field in under 5 minutes. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new, and if you like the On The Go series, give it a thumbs up and hit the bell for more content. With that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Stay sharp.